the Wild West of Africa. Home to one of the world's most extraordinary street gangs. A travelling circus that use an intoxicating blend of voodoo and dangerous animals to make a living. Not everyone can do this. It's magic. For the first time, this bizarre urban tribe has given access to film, revealing a way of life that is both fascinating and shocking. My specialty is baboons. I train them in such a way that when you look at them, you think they are humans. We dig beneath the surface of this wild world that appears dangerously out of control and explore the myths that surround these enigmatic people and their troop of baboons, snakes and hyenas. Behind the spectacle, we discover a close-knit family that have a unique and controversial relationship with their animals, steeped in magic and tradition. This is what we inherit from our forefathers. Our children here are going to inherit the same traditions. But who are these people? And how do they live so close to such dangerous animals? Even when the animals hold us or bite us, it doesn't hurt. Why are these shocking rituals allowed to continue? And what do they tell us about human-animal relations in 21st century Africa? Welcome to the world of the Hyena Men. Nigeria, a West African country, tarnished with a violent history of military dictatorships, corruption and fraud. It's Africa's most densely populated country, and over half of its 140 million people live in abject poverty. Our journey begins in the clogged heart of Lagos, Nigeria's most infamous city. Traffic gridlocks the streets, and two out of three people live in slums. It's in the thick of Lagos that we're hoping to meet the hyena men. Last thing we heard from our local contacts is that they are living at the back of this market. But we've been warned, they're constantly on the move and notoriously difficult to find. I can see you are welcome because you come here in order to visit us. We arrive to find the gang have made a temporary home in the squalor of this rubbish dump. Living with the hyena men are the animals they've caught from the wild and brought to the city to perform in their street circus. Along with hyenas tied to the ground with heavy chains, gang members charm sackfuls of venomous and constricting snakes. We also discover a troop of a dozen or so baboons. Conditions are bad for the animals but they're equally bad for the people that live here. Virtually no one has access to drinking water, electricity and waste disposal. It's why some people have called this place the land of no tomorrow. <laughs> the hyena men are Hausa Muslims from the rural farmlands in northern Nigeria. They are said to practice voodoo and use ancient magic to bring wild animals under their control. It's rumoured they have supernatural powers and some people even believe they are part hyena. Alhazi is the boss of the hyena men. This thing we do, I have inherited from my forefathers. And I 
I catch these animals and play with them, entertain with them. We also sell them to zoos. I catch these animals myself. We go into the bush to get these animals, and when we bring them out, people are astonished. These are not animals that live with humans naturally. When people see them, they are amazed. God has given us the powers to stop them harming anybody. This is how we earn a living. We learn the hyena men are preparing to take their show out onto the streets of a zone in Lagos called Mile 12 and have been told by Barau, the senior hyena handler, to be wary of the area boys, notorious Lagos street gangs who protect their turf, acting as vigilantes and using violence to extort money. That's why we go around in groups. If they harass us, we are ready for them. Even if they bring knives, we chase them with our animals until they drop their knives. Some African newspapers have made allegations that these men are bank robbers, debt collectors and drug dealers. But in truth, no one really knows. One thing certain, no one messes with a man with a hyena. The savagery of the performance makes uncomfortable viewing. Although this form of entertainment is fully legal in Nigeria, the apparent brutality of this unique street act challenges Western taboos. Many outsiders say this urban circus should be outlawed for cruelty to animals. Head baboon keeper Abdullahi has trained his performers to act out behaviours that run against every natural instinct. He's even taught baboons to handle their most feared enemy in the wild, venomous snakes. My specialty is the baboons. I train them in such a way that when you look at them, you think they are human. This practice has been going on for generations, and for veterans like Barau, it's the only life he's ever known. I've been doing this for 50 years. I was nine years old when I started. We use plants that we drink to give us power. And even when the animals hold us or bite us, it doesn't hurt. We've also got magic potions that would take to give us power. I can even put my head in their mouth. Whatever play I want to do with these animals, I can do. Many locals are spellbound by the performance, believing the hyena men possess supernatural powers. Because of the wild animals that we use, like the snakes and everything else we touch, people can't see that they don't hurt us. It gives them the belief that, truthfully, we are traditional medicine practitioners. And if anyone comes to us with a problem, we give them medicine. By the grace of God, the medicine will work for them just as they want. People on the street pay the hyena men generously for traditional medicines, amulets and homemade voodoo charms.
Many Nigerians still live in fear of witches and evil spirits and believe the men's potions will be effective in warding them off. After two hours parading the streets, about 10,000 naira, roughly 40 pounds, have passed through the hands of the baboons into the pockets of the hyena men. Not a bad day's work by Nigerian standards. The hyena men spend about half the year traveling and performing across the whole of Nigeria. The rest is spent living with their families in the villages and townships of the north. Most of the men are married with young children and it seems everyone, down to the toddlers, has a part to play in the business of performing with animals. At hyena handler Barao's house, snakes are at the centre of everyone's attention. Barao's children, some still crawling, are being taught to handle snakes by their mothers who have fed them magic potions to give them immunity from venom. Our children are given herbal mixtures the minute they are delivered. We wash them with the mixture and give it to them to drink so that by the time they grow up, they are not scared of snakes or other animals. It cures them of any fear for life. We sell the herbal medicines, we sell all types, from the type that we only give to children to traditional medicines for adults. We provide traditional medicines for all ailments, snake bites and scorpion bites. We have protection against wizards and witches and also for poison. We've got them all here. This is what we inherit from our forefathers. We were brought up seeing our parents doing it. This is the work we do to sustain ourselves. Our children here are going to inherit it and do the same tradition. Alhazi, who's recently been appointed the head of the hyena men, is visiting his family home in Katsina, in the far north of Nigeria. He's told us that he's got fingers in many pies. As well as running the animal circus, he's also involved in organized street fighting, as well as managing these extreme performers who do extraordinary things with knives and nails. Alhazi is taking us to meet his extended family. Al Hazi's dad is revered as the godfather of a business that's been going on in Nigeria for generations and generations. My name is Alhaji Amadu Nalado, district head of Gadi in Katsina. I'm 20 multiplied by 4 and add 10. 
If you see any man performing with an animal in Nigeria, then they were trained by me. We go out to greet people with snakes, like this one, that we catch and put in our pocket, like this. As the most respected elder of the hyena men, Alhaji has the authority to allow us to see some of their secret potions. This here is a snake charm, and the other one is also for snakes. You can catch snakes, like the one I had earlier, if you rub these on you. You can eat this one. The hyena men have a complex relationship with their animals that's not unlike that of an extended family. Abdullahi Muhammad regularly performs on the streets and appears to have a genuine affection for his animals. <laughs> It understands how to entertain. That's why I call it a meter. It has the brain to entertain. There's an Indian actor called a meter. Its attitude is like that of the Indian actor. I like my job because that's what I grew up with. When I grew up, my parents, grandparents and brothers were doing the same thing. So you know I can't leave what my people do. I've earned a living from this, got married from this, I've made a home from this. All that I have has come from this. We're told that Dr. Abraham, the local vet, is coming to pay a visit to check on the health of the hyenas and baboons as well as give them their yearly vaccination against rabies. Oh, in Chen and Nanko, vaccination is very important. Why we do this is so that uh, when the hyena by mistake bites either the owner, yes, in the course of uh, event, uh, the, the person is protected. And then when he bites an onlooker in the course of play, the person beaten is uh, protected, yes. And then when another rabbit dog or hyena bites yep. the vaccinated hyena, the hyena is protected. <laughs> the presence of a fully trained vet gives a bizarre legitimacy to the hyena men's operation. It seems as long as their animals have up-to-date vaccination certificates, the government will issue a license that allows the hyena men to perform with their animals in public. I handle the training of the monkeys. We are licensed by the federal government to perform with these animals. Our license is in Lagos, but it covers us to perform in the whole of Nigeria. Back in Lagos, Barao, the senior hyena handler, is leading us down the back alleys of Mile 12. It's feeding time for the hyenas. And we're heading to buy meat at the abattoir. This goat meat is normally reserved for human consumption. 
If someone comes to see us entertain them, and they see that the animals are emaciated, they might think that I'm not taking good care of them, that I'm cheating the animals. Because of this, I get the type of food the animals want. So people are amazed that I give this sort of food to the animals. Barao says the hyenas are fed every other day. To his mind, they have a good life and is puzzled when asked whether it might be wrong to be keeping hyenas in the urban chaos of the Lagos slums. You mean like it's not a good thing? It is a good thing in our eyes. Because if a hyena is in the bush, let us go along to the caves and put logs of wood in the hyena's tanks, pour on petrol, light it up and kill them. We catch them and we bring them into the city and we give them food and drink and we use them to get our own food. You see, with us, they eat and they drink. This is better than the life they have in a bush. Hyenas are formidable predators, equipped with a powerful jaw. Razor-sharp teeth are designed for cutting flesh and pulverizing bone. <laughs> but the hyena men believe they have the upper hand. They have absolute faith that their magic concoctions, derived from a secret mix of plant and animal parts, enable them to control and subdue their star performers. When we go to get these animals, we use magic potions before we go into the caves. And we can apply potions to the animals to make them harmless to people. There's something we give the animals when we're training them that makes them listen to us and understand everything that we say in whatever language we use. Not everyone can do this. It's magic. If I'm close to you, I can teach you some of the magic, but I won't tell you what the source is. Although the men have complete trust in their animal magic, the hyena men are not immune to injury from their wild pets. The baboons they keep are highly intelligent and are renowned for their ferocity and lethal bite. Threatening opponents with their long fangs and sharp claws. Abdullahi bears the scars from his years of training baboons. I got these scars from a baboon. It had a temper of a wild animal, but only I could play with it. As it is, whatever we do, even when we go to capture these animals, whatever we do, we always combine with our belief in God, and we ask that he makes it possible, and he brings us back safely. It's Friday morning, and Alhaze, boss of the hyena men, and Abdullahi, the senior baboon trainer, are on their way to offer prayers at the local mosque. I go to the mosque on Friday. I don't miss the mosque. I do all five prayers every day. As we arrive, we're told that our camera is not welcome. We leave Alhaze and Abdullahi to attend the mosque on their own. But later, we're allowed to film one of Alhazi's boxers, who also performs with baboons, receiving blessings from a holy man. Tonight, there's a big fight and boxer Lawal Muazu is seeking God's protection. 
Akala rabu kong do uli ati jo blaku. Yang mang kahi lo kahi ni. Yang mang si ane ni. As a hyena men's leader, Al Hazi is heavily involved in organized street fights and promotes several boxers like Lawa Muazu, who travel the length and breadth of Nigeria with the hyena men. It's a notoriously violent backstreet sport, and Al Hazi has invited us to join him at tonight's fight, or Dembe, as it's called in Hausa. <laughs> I have boys that participate in the fights. I always have a strong man within the fight. So everywhere we go, we're always with them. After offering prayers to Allah, Lawal Muazu uses black magic to give him extra powers in the fight. He hangs protective amulets around his neck, as well as using a razor blade to cut his arm to administer magic potions. Before you go into a fight, you make sure that you mix the potions with your blood in the cot and apply them so they stay in your system. Wrapped inside the fighter's fist are animal skins, bird feathers, and voodoo charms. There are instances when you have to put your hand inside a grave and bury it for about a week. And there are occasions when you have to get a lot of traditional medicine. Some make use of broken bottles, some use snake venom, some use a snake tongue, and then mix it all up and rub it in their hands. So when they strike a hard blow at someone, he dies. There are few rules to this brutal game. Fighters have three rounds to knock their opponents to the ground, but if they're evenly matched, the contest can last for hours. You can only punch with one hand. The fist is bound in flat, wetted, and then covered in sand to give extra sting to the punch. The other hand is used for defense, as well as to trick and taunt. The idea is to tempt your opponent to make a false move before delivering the knockout punch. Sometimes people die, even if they don't die there. They get hurt in such a way that they go back and die at home. Some other ones get injured and get ill and die gradually. There are some that die there on the spot. One of Alhaze's boxers, called Ismalia, is nicknamed the Hyena for his fierce fighting. And the scars on his face that his fellow travellers say look like the hide of a spotted hyena. Tina, that small boy. When I was a small boy, I had scalding water on my face. And this is how I've been fighting ever since. I fight with my face this way. It can be heat, but nothing happens to it. I can fight with it. Truthfully, I have to fight. I can't be without fighting. When I come to Lagos, I'm always fighting. Always fighting. Like the hyena men, it seems that this is a world you're born into and that you don't question. Most of the boxers feel they've no choice. Their life as backstreet fighters, they say, has been chosen by God. You know, fighting is my destiny. We're up early the next day because the gang are leaving Lagos and heading 400 miles north to the remote highland forests to catch wild animals and replenish their stock. Hey. 
Seeing a baboon clamber onto a clapped out minibus, it's apparent that the hyenas, monkeys, snakes and men are going to squash in and travel together. To these guys, there's nothing unusual about having a 180 pound hyena sitting on your lap as a travel companion. Less than 100 yards into the journey, there's a problem. It's a gang of area boys. They've blocked the road and are refusing to let the hyena men pass until they've paid them. This kind of intimidation is a daily occurrence in Lagos and not even the streetwise hyena men are immune from it. Area boys, come on, Area boys are thugs that have got no conscience. They've got no work. When we meet them and they try to start a fight with us, we are always ready. Because we're not afraid of them, we are always ready. After a few judicious backhanders, the hyena men are allowed to go on their way. I like England. I stay in Pekin. If you don't give them something, then we allow you to go. Leaving Lagos, the men and their menagerie of animals head north to the countryside. A 20-hour road trip that takes them through some of Nigeria's poorest regions. At least 70 million people, half Nigeria's population, live in abject poverty and have no access to clean water despite the fact that historically the government and military have extorted billions of dollars from the rich supplies of the country's oil. Ahaze has organized a dozen or so motorbikes to take his men on the first leg of a hunting trip deep into the wilds of northern Nigeria. <laughs> They're heading into the bush to catch animals to sell to Nigerian zoos and private collectors, as well as to use in their own performances. Before entering the bush, the hyena men stop to buy flashlights. They'll need these to illuminate the pitch black cave systems where the hyenas live. We're told that they'll be specifically targeting hyena dens, as it's here they're most likely to catch hyena pups, which are worth as much as $450 a piece, as well as being the most suitable age for training. The hyena men have reached the end of the road and left their motorbikes, as from now on, vehicle access is impossible. They've stopped at a small herder settlement to rest, eat bushmeat and catch up on news from local hunters who know the caves where the hyenas den, like the back of their hand. The men are certain that hyenas are close because they've recently eaten several of the local herding family's sheep and cows. As far as this community, who rely completely on their livestock for their livelihood, is concerned, the presence of the hyena men is welcome. Barau hands the hunting party magic charms, leather sachets that hold a secret recipe of plants, bird feathers and animal parts. With this charm, you'll be protected from wild animals. If a lion or a hyena or any wild animal comes close to you, it will run away. 
because of the smell. Now the hyena men are on foot. They're being led by two local bushmeat hunters who live for weeks at a time in this wilderness, often on their own, hunting monkeys, deer, lizards and snakes. A six mile hike to base camp takes the party deep into an almost pristine forest. On the journey, we pass men who spend their lives working in the blistering heat. Hello. Hauling out 300 pound timbers, probably illegally, and likely destined for trade in the West. Yeah, you're not the right man. The hyena men arrive at base camp and will settle here for the night. They are 400 miles from where we first met them on the dump in Lagos. They are now in their traditional northern Nigerian homeland. For hundreds of years, these men's forefathers have come into the wilds to hunt for bushmeat to eat or to catch animals for performing. In the West, these people's way of life is universally condemned. But in Nigeria, when you live hand to mouth and have to hunt to survive, Western values don't even come into question. You see this gun? This gun you're looking at? I've had for 18 years. In that time, I've killed countless antelope, gazelle, hedgehog and monkeys. I'm still haunted for my livelihood. I don't know how much longer I'll be able to carry on hunting, but I'll carry on as long as I can. Early next morning, the hyena men are up for the hunt. Barau is back in his bag of magic potions he insists will not only make him invincible, but also invisible to hyenas. At the caves, the hyena men burn incense to ward off bad spirits, as well as to give them supernatural powers for hunting. They prepare wire nooses that they'll use to slip around the neck of hyenas to constrain them. A cornered female hyena will readily kill to defend her pups. But Abdullahi has complete faith that his magic charms and potions will protect the men from being attacked. If you're not well protected with the magic potions, then you wouldn't even dream of coming here. It's so dark here, you have to use a torchlight before you can get to where they are. The hyena men have split into two groups. One is hunting below ground, while the other scour the rocks above, looking for signs and tracks that may lead them to the entrance of a hyena's den. But suddenly, there's a very big problem. A hive of African bees has been disturbed by the hunting party, and now they're starting to swarm, aggressively defending their territory. We got chased by bees around here. There isn't much you can do. We will get stung bad. I've been stung five times already. I've been stung too. Yeah. As African bee swarms can be fatal to humans, those above ground are forced to evacuate the area, 
it's simply too risky to stay here. Back near camp, Abdullahi has seen something. It's obviously not a hyena, but they think it could be a large cobra that's taken cover in the crack of this rock. Use the tail. The tail, you got the tail. Mm. What is it? What The tail of what? The tail of a uh, uh, monitor lizard. Uh, monitor lizard. What are you going to do with it? I will eat it now. <laughs> It appears that after the best part of two days hunting in the bush, the sum total of the hyena men's effort is a 10-ounce lizard. But everyone seems happy, as this kind of lizard is a real delicacy in this part of the world. Only when we return to Barrow's village do we discover that the hyena men who stayed searching in the caves when the bees arrived had better luck? They've caught a three-month-old hyena. And head of the hyena men, Alhaze, is very pleased. They went into a hole and saw it inside. Next, they drove the mother away and took the baby. As it is now, I could get $450 from the zoo. You also get people that want to buy it to keep as a pet. Such people can afford to pay much more than $450. If we happen to get a baby hyena like this one, that is between two to three months, then we keep, feed and continue to surround it with the smell of insects from the traditional medicine, so as to allow its sense of smell to get used to the smell of people, and to hypnotize it so it can forget about its life in the bush. The process of hypnotizing it with incense and feeding it will continue for about three to four months before training begins properly. By then it's strong enough and all the memory it has of its mother is entirely gone and we can continue with its training. <laughs> At Alhaze's house, we find more recently caught animals, fresh from the wild. Here they'll be trained to perform in the city. One of the hyena men shows a baby baboon being introduced to a python for the first time.
It still shows its innate terror of snakes. But in a year's time, this baboon will be turning somersaults and handling snakes, performing to crowds on the streets of Lagos. The hyena men have a controversial relationship with their animals. When questioned whether what they do is morally acceptable, they defend their way of life. These animals, they say, are their only means of survival. I have my children here. I have three girls and three boys. And before I go away, I make sure no matter how little or how much money I have, I live enough to sustain my family. Because you see, I can't bear to see my family suffer. I eat, drink and sustain myself with this business. God has given me this. I may not be wealthy, but I'm comfortable. The rituals of the hyena men go back hundreds of years, but the future is less certain. Alhazi, the leader of the performers, thinks there may come a time when he's forced to bring an end to his operation. In the days of our parents, people were ruled differently. There were no police or the like. You were free to do as you wish. But now, the leaders are always taking the turns to rule. And any one of them who is ruthless can take power. Someone might come into power and decide he does not want to see animals roam the street. And will have no option but to stop. That is what I'm thinking all the time. Whether the Nigerian government and pressure from the outside world will force this brutal business to end, or whether this extraordinary tradition that's steeped in magic and religion will continue for years to come, only time will tell. <laughs> <laughs>